at something which that's some, that's something that's really fun about this industry is like it's something new every single day mm-hmm. and even if you have that five-year plan like you can't even tell yourself like exactly where you're going to be in five years yeah. no. because things change so much especially mm-hmm. in this industry because like you know tomorrow like jen could get a call from la and be like yeah oh, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> we, need you the, we need you on the next Marvel movie. Um. Yeah, but like in all reality, yeah. you could get you could get that phone call mm-hmm. and say, you know what? Sorry, Devon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can run sanitation remotely. Hi, everybody. This is Matt from Make Up Your Life. I hope you enjoy the episode coming up. But what I wanted to let you know was how we actually record this and put it on the air. It's thanks to Anchor. Anchor's the easiest way to make a podcast. I'll explain real quick. First of all, it's free. All right. That's number one right there. You're saving money. I have run the gamut on a bunch of different podcasting services. I can't tell you how much money I've put down. You get one for free. Uh, There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. How cool is that? You can call somebody up from your phone, get that podcast going, get your guests going. Easy peasy, one, two, three, easy. Need something to do on your commute? Boom, Anchor. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And of course, the way that you're listening to this podcast right now is all thanks to Anchor. And you can make money with your podcast with no listenership. That's right. No listenership. How crazy is that? Uh, <laughs> so they're they're not looking for a minimum listenership for that um, for that sponsorship to start running. So you you just go right ahead. You get your podcast going, and you can find sponsors. Uh, much like I am here now, telling you about Anchor. I couldn't be happier, and I want you to check it out too. So go on over to Anchor.fm if you are ready to get your podcast started. If you have a story to tell, why not tell it? on Anchor. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Makeup Your Life where we are telling the story of how to mix makeup into your life. The journeys have all been different. Uh, They've all been exciting. Yeah. (laughs) We've seen some tears, had a lot of laughs, Mm -hmm. uh, and we've got uh, a returning guest today and a brand new guest that Kelsey's going to introduce in a minute. But again, just for anybody that is joining in on their first episode of Make Up Your Life, we do just want to paint a picture of how many different ways you can get into makeup, uh, how different the journeys can be. And like I mentioned, we've had the The episodes that were full of laughs, we've had the episodes that are full of tears, so it's just everybody's a little different. Uh, (laughs) We've got, I can tell this one, it's not going to be a tearjerker based on what's going on so far, Uh, but that's okay. That's what I prefer anyway. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. And who are you? You didn't introduce yourself again. Did it again. Thanks, Kelsey. You're welcome. (laughs) My name is Matt. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Clink. 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 Absolutely. Hi guys, today we are here with two people as we know. Um, our returning guest is Nicole Deal. She's a former alumni from Multimedia Makeup Academy, now instructor, freelancer, and film extraordinaire. (laughs) And and with us today, brand new, is Jen Coakley. She has seven, eight years in the makeup business professionally, um, both as a freelancer and as an instructor at Multimedia Makeup Academy. And Jen is very dedicated to her work, and she is a force to be reckoned with, aren't you? (laughs) May the force be with you. Wow. And there we are. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen Star Wars? Yeah. Mm. yeah. I haven't seen any Star Wars. I haven't I've seen, seen one movie. What? I've seen one movie, and it was Revenge of the Sith. I refuse it's my to favorite watch one. any of the newer well, ones. The only one. It's the only one. <laughs> <It's> the <laughs> only one. <laughs> I haven't watched any of the newer ones. I only watched the original trilogy. I refuse okay. to watch the newer ones. You guys ones. are all monsters. I yeah. like Star Wars, and I watch all oh, of them. Oh, good. So all right. So, we're Nicole, you're the only one who's allowed to still be in here. If you two could please leave. All right, I'm out. (laughs) (laughs) Bye. I guess 
Please, <laughs> just with Bye, Nicole today. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jen, can you tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do currently, um, and, and give make sure us... it all revolves around Star Wars. Yes, yeah. It has to... <laughs> I want Star Wars puns in here. I want everything. Um, so makeup artist, I am. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's all I got. As long as you're talking your Baby Yoda voice, Kelsey. I actually, I don't know what Baby Yoda sounds like. I don't either. I haven't, I haven't seen... watched it yet. I don't yet. think anybody knows what Baby Yoda sounds like. It's just arm know. waves. Isn't and... it? Am I the only one who's it's watched it? It's not Baby Yoda, it. though, right? Yeah, no, it's no, not. No, it's not. There's just no name for the race. So they created a, a species. Yoda? <laughs> Well, he's the, name, well, right? okay, he's the name of the character. This has nothing to do with the podcast whatsoever, but I heard that... <laughs> like this whole conversation. Yeah, right? <laughs> so I heard that there's like this conspiracy that Yoda could possibly have had a child or have had like a grandchild, and that's oh, yeah. what this... Baby Wasn't there a meme where it's like he hooked up with one of the gremlins? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and made like baby Yoda. So there was baby a Mori one that was like, you are not the father. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> so my question for you is, who are you as Jen Coakley? What do you do currently? And uh, then we'll get into more of how you got to be where you are. That's a lot of questions all at once. It is. Um, break it down. Well, I'm Jen. <laughs> Hi, Jen. Hi. <laughs> I like makeup. <laughs> um, I don't even know where to start. I mean, can you ask it more specifically? I guess? Yeah, absolutely. So what are you doing currently? Let's start with that. Currently, I am an instructor at the Academy, um, Multimedia Makeup Academy. I don't know if you guys talked about the Academy at all up until this point. But... Uh, quite a bit. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> Um, I'm an instructor at the Academy. We also, this year, 2019, launched Sanitation Conversation. Um, so long story short, it's a company based on trying to disrupt the industry that lacks protocols for sanitation for makeup artists. Mm -hmm. um, so Devon and I, the owner of the Academy, launched that together, and that's kind of been my primary focus for this year. So still, still doing makeup, still incorporated with makeup, but just teaching and spreading the message about sanitation. Yeah, absolutely. And then did you... Have you always had a passion for teaching, or is this something that you were doing makeup first and then you kind of got well, it's, into something? Or do I, you want to you want to start with something else, Matt? Yeah, yeah. I, I want to take hmm. that before we jump into the makeup. Yeah, because we always want to find out what happened. Mm -hmm. Like, what were you thinking pre makeup, or was this always yeah. oh, on your mind? Yeah. All right. Well, it's a long story. We're ready. <laughs> Many moons ago. The microphone is, is <laughs> catching all the audio. Um. <laughs> My dad was in the army for 24 years, so he met my mom in Germany, and I was conceived. I'm sure we don't want details on Congratulations. that. Congratulations. I think we all know how that happens. How does that work? <laughs> the birds and the bees. The baby Yoda. The baby Yoda. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> um... So, as a kid, I mean, we traveled all over the place. I was born in Germany. Um, it was there until I was three, three or four. Um, came to the States again with a... What's so I'm going to break this chair. This <laughs> chair just cracked. It's There's been doing huge, this all day. You can see on the audio file this huge spike where I, I'm snapping this chair in half. It's like, oh, sorry. Keep going, sorry. Your baby Yoda, your Germany. <laughs> yes. Um... So we were stationed all over. I mean, I don't know how familiar people are with the military, but a, a term is three years. So wherever you're stationed for that term, you're there for three years, you get stationed somewhere else, yada yada. Um, so we mostly stayed southeast, the southeast states. Um, and then we were stationed in Georgia, which is where I lived the longest. So we had three terms back to back. So mm -hmm. nine years. Um, fast forward, I guess, I mean, that's kind of the childhood part of it. Um, once I was done with high school, I hated school. I'm just going to say it. I hated school. I hated it. Same. I sucked at math. 
I remembered just enough to take the test and forgot it the next day. I just <laughs> I was never good at school. I liked art class and that was about it. Now yeah. would you guys believe that I was actually a nerd yes. in high school? Yeah. You're wearing an X Men an X Men shirt. <laughs> No. Did you guys ever believe? <laughs> He's wearing a- as he like pushes like the glasses up. <laughs> believe. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this. Where's my pocket protector? <laughs> uh, I feel naked without it. Oh, um, I. But that. I mean, I, I. I feel like we all hate school probably for different reasons, right? Mm-hmm. Like I was bullied to no end. I am definitely. Shocker. The- yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Um, <laughs> was it uh was it just the those education the, the way they taught it that that you kind of hated it was kind of just my upbringing in general so with my dad being our ar- the army very militant very by the yeah. book very government corporate follow the rules and i don't like rules so (laughs) yeah um yeah (laughs) so i don't know i just school just never was my thing i mean i graduated so Mm -hmm. that's good um (laughs) barely but i did did you go to college yes you did did i want to go to college Mm -hmm. no (laughs) Okay. okay but it was another one of those things where there are two parts of it. I, I didn't want to go, but I knew I probably should for later in life just yeah. to have some kind of plan B. Right. Um, but mostly because my dad wanted me to go. Mm-hmm. So I went. I mean, I same as I did in high school. I got through the classes. I made, you know, just good enough grades to pass and called it a day. Yeah. So, you go, what, did you have a major, or did you get to that point? Just associates in general studies. Cool. Just, yeah. yeah just it's a to, degree. Yeah, just to it's have a something. Degree. Yeah. Have I ever needed to use it at this point? No. Yeah. <laughs> but I got it. <laughs> yeah. Thousands of dollars for a piece of paper. <laughs> so that was, that was plan B. What was plan yeah. A? Um... I wanted to do graphic design initially. Oh, wow. So okay. I went to school for it. Um... I I enjoyed it initially, but it got to the point where if I had to make another restaurant menu, I was going to kill myself. (laughs) Like, literally. I'm sure that's, like, all you were doing. Yeah. in basic graphic design, it's literally just, like, menus and... And, like, I get it. You have to learn the basics to, you know, do what you want to do. I always loved music. I go to concerts still to this day, but especially as a kid, I went to concerts like every other weekend, local shows, rock music. Mm -hmm. So initially I wanted to do graphic design for album artwork. Mm. So that's the kind of the mindset I was in going into it. And, you know, after the 50th restaurant menu, I was just like, okay, so when can I learn what I actually want to do? Yeah. (laughs) Um, I honestly... As I was doing it, I realized it it wasn't a fit for me either. Mm -hmm. Um, So I quit doing that and kind of just finished out my degree just to finish. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I just, between graduating college and deciding to do makeup, which, you know, there's a backstory of how I got into makeup, but there's about a good five-year break in between that. And I kind of found makeup late in life, in my opinion. I was 23. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of the students that we have now are like 16, some even 15, 15, 16, Mm -hmm. 17. And I'm just like, I wish I would have known then. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. So So what what happened that got you really into makeup for it to be like, okay, this is where I need to be? Well, I, I felt like I was always creative, no matter what. So mm-hmm. I liked art, I liked music, I liked drawing, you know, whatever it is, the creative side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was a teenager, I wore makeup. Of course, back in the day, it was like the black eyeshadow everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's punk rock. It was cool then. It's not cool now. <laughs> um. Well, you guys, you guys grew up in the 90s. Like, I'm a 97 baby, so I didn't really get much of the 90s. But you guys had a little bit more of the 90s to really get into the culture, didn't you? I was a child. You were, you were still a kid. <laughs> I was born in 94. Okay. So. 
I was born okay. in 89. So okay. you, you had, yeah. I'm so you had, and I'm going to break this chair. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you were wearing makeup as a teenager and then. Yeah, yeah. So I always mm -hmm. liked makeup. The funny thing is nobody ever taught me how to do it. So mm -hmm. looking back at pictures now, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I look nuts. Nuts. <laughs> um my mom she wore very little makeup i mean once she had me it pretty much ruined her life if she was here she'll tell you that but <laughs> <laughs> she just went to the most ba basic person ever but before me she wore like the blue eye shadow mm. and um so i mean i wasn't really exposed to it in like a family setting i just i, I would put it on myself it was fun um and then right before i decided to start going to school for makeup uh, my best friend of over 10 years now i would hang out with her and she would go shopping for makeup <laughs> hundreds of dollars every time we would go to the store just mac everything wow. and finally i was just like i could probably make money doing this <laughs> like it's something that's just fun to me it came natural to me it was easy mm -hmm. and i was like well, why not just turn it into a career yeah or at least try i mean can't hurt so so it could be said that i didn't get into makeup because all my friends were poor and couldn't afford hundreds of dollars <laughs> 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 so you have to be rich First. Well, I wouldn't no. even say <laughs> somebody who can who has a lot of disposable income. No, 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 no. no, 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 no definitely, no. though, it's definitely That's a priority thing. I'm money. sure she couldn't afford mm -hmm. it, but she still, you know, I, I think to put it bluntly, it's people nowadays. Anyways, they don't have a pot to piss in, but they're gonna get their <laughs> nails and their hair done so yeah. they yeah. look good for sure. You know what I mean? It's just priority based, so. I just figure, you know, this is kind of the next avenue to try out. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it sticks. And here I am now. So yeah. you decided to go to school yeah. for makeup. Yep. When did you make that decision? I was 23. Okay. And then you I'm came... 30 now, for reference. <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. So... Like, what was that, what was yeah. that switch, though, that flipped? Yeah. Like, I know your friend is buying makeup, and you kind of said, maybe I can do this as a career. But mm -hmm. was it... Was it seeing like what was going on in the shops or, uh, and I just mean- Well, like, yeah, like, at that time types. too, I was watching a lot of YouTube videos. Okay. So, you know, I got interested in it that way as well. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, just the common sense part of it, you know, it's a billion dollar, probably trillion dollar industry at this point. And yeah. there, why not? Okay, cool. Yeah. So you went to school at Multimedia Makeup Academy. I did. You I did. graduated. I did. And then... Successfully with good grades this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, were just, you were doing something that you really liked yeah. to do. Yeah, it didn't even feel like school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just, it was fun to come to every day, so... Yeah, for sure. How do you feel about all this? Yeah. Hi, Nicole. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do I feel about what? You break I'm gonna Mac. Say, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna keep a tally of how many times. We're at three so far. <laughs> so was this was it the same kind of experience for you? If we'll we want a little yeah. bit, we know my backstory. Yeah. Um, I want her to interview yeah. Jen for a second. Yeah. We, we brought you in here as oh, our boy. third co-host. Yeah. <laughs> um. No. There's a lot of questions not related to makeup I could ask Jen, but... <laughs> <laughs> Catch us on uh, Make Up Your Life After Dark. <laughs> <laughs> so, was there, like, an artist that kind of you stalked on social media that you were like, this is my inspiration, I want to kind of mm -hmm. be like them? Is that... Yeah, still mm -hmm. to this day, Pat McGrath. Mm-hmm. She is amazing. If you have not heard of her, you need to check her out. Mm -hmm. um, which is funny because I feel like my aesthetic as an artist now is... It, it's hit or miss. So she does, just short backstory, she does mostly fashion and runway, but she does tend to push a little bit more avant-garde with her looks. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I feel like my aesthetic now, it can go that way, but I kind of steer more towards either natural or even mm -hmm. the Instagram makeup, if mm -hmm. you will, because it's fun. I mean, is it suitable for everybody? No, but mm -hmm. it's fun to do. Yeah. So, for sure. So, what, what kind of work did you do after you, you graduated from <laughs> MMA? Uh, film work, actually. <laughs> um, I've been dying to say... I don't know what it is. We, we just finished an interview before this. And every uh -oh. time Kelsey says graduated, I want to say graduated so bad. I don't know what it is. It's from a cartoon that I watch. You say and it that? it was like a joke. You say that and I think of regurgitated and it makes me uncomfortable. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't well, thinking about that it's until all now. Way to make now, a yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's all the information coming in. So maybe... You're just like... Once you it graduate, out of us. <laughs> no. So yeah. So, so anyway, you graduate. You're going into film. <laughs> Sorry. There's a lot of yeah. Time. So <laughs> oh, yeah. that's right. Six no. times. Um, <laughs> my sticks. When I started school, I didn't really have a specific goal in mind. I just wanted to learn every aspect of makeup because I knew that should the opportunity arise, I never wanted to say no. I didn't want to turn down money, right? Yeah. So I wanted to learn how to do everything, whether it was just basic beauty, um, avant-garde, special effects, whatever it was. So at the time, the programs were structured a little bit differently, but I essentially took everything, everything that I could take, uh, with the exception of bridal, but we probably shouldn't get into that. I, I don't have the personality for brides. I'm not going to be excited for you on your special day, so I know. But I know this about myself. Yeah, this is yeah. Jen is so. the person, and it's, and it's not a surprise that she says this. Like, if you know her, you know. Like, so like they... the, I get excited, don't get me wrong, but, like, it's just, it's not in my personality to be mm -hmm. shitting rainbows. It's just, it's not <laughs> yeah. who I am. Yeah. And I feel like and I, would be a dis that. I would be yeah. a disservice to a bride if I didn't have that kind of personality. It's yeah. their special day. They're super excited. Mm -hmm. They probably want that same energy back, and I can't give that back. Yeah. So they'd be met, like, once they start crying when they're thinking about everything. and I'd be pissed because then i got to fix down. the makeup. You're just... <laughs> like, can you quit crying? <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so it's probably not the best thing to admit about myself, but I know no, that about myself. Well, that's why... Yeah. That's why yeah. we're friends because I'm the opposite. Total I'm like, opposite. Yeah. So we balance each other out. <laughs> for sure. Um, Nicole, could you be a little bit more giggly? For oh, this? you want me to smile more? Yeah, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, I gotta see the minute mark so I can delete that. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned everything but bridal. Um, and once... I'm trying to think... I don't even think I was graduated yet, and an opportunity came up to do a film. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a film school that's local to us that we partner with all the time, and it was kind of one of the first partnerships that we had with them. Mm -hmm. um, they were doing, the owner of that school was doing a feature film. Um, so they reached out to the school to try to get artists to work on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brandy actually called me to see if I was interested and I kind of shit my pants a little bit because I wasn't, yeah. I felt like I wasn't ready, but it, it was mostly because I just didn't have the experience yet. Mm -hmm. So I bit the bullet and I did it and it was, it was a thing. I mean, it was, it was fun. It was fun. It was an experience. <laughs> you, don't, you don't sound very confident. <laughs> I mean, did yeah, something you know, happen? No, no, it's not worth discussing. Okay. But. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a podcast. It was one hundred percent worth. No. 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 <laughs> oh, come on. Um, it, I mean, it was just an experience. So, <laughs> yeah. which led to other experiences. Which, so in the long run, it was a good thing. But right. it didn't. It, um, did that? experience turn you off from no that? no no not at all not okay. at all yeah i guess i just you know you're going into something new so you have these certain expectations mm -hmm. and it's just the exact opposite yeah. for the most part so yeah um i think it just boils down to in general i'm a very organized person mm -hmm. and i had to get in the mindset of not being a hundred percent organized yeah. Because, I mean, you know, both of you know, Kelsey and Nicole, that's how film sets are. Mm -hmm. You kind of just have to pick up and go and be ready whenever. Yeah. 
Um, so I learned that very quickly. <laughs> um, 12 hour days to maybe two hours of that you're doing makeup if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. It depends upon what the movie is and how much makeup is entailed. Um, but once I got that opportunity, it, it clicked in my mind that film probably made the most sense anyways to do because depending upon what the movie is about, what the script is, it can be any kind of makeup. Yeah. You don't know what you're doing. It could be the most basic makeup. It could be a horror movie and you're making, what, 10 gallons of blood and throwing it down a high school hallway oh, in the boy. shape of an arrow. To be very specific. PTSD. And then having to stay <laughs> and then having cleaning to clean it up. up. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. White, it was, what, a white tile floor? White tile floor, and I used four or five gallons of blood down the hallway, and, like, Jen was pouring it, and I was on my hands and knees, like, spreading it oh around the God. floor. And then we filmed it, and they were like, okay, well, the school closes in, like, 15, so we need to get this up. And we were like, what? 15 minutes? It took more than that to put the blood on the floor. Like, yeah. Uh, it was easily okay. probably, like, 100 yards long. Wow. Yeah. I, have you seen pictures of this, Matt? No. You should I'll get some pictures from, yeah, yeah, from Nicole and Jen. This set looks amazing, what they did. Yeah. It looks really cool, but... Yo, being on your hands and knees, scrubbing that shit out of the floor, uh-uh. Well, it was nice oh, because yeah, the it... entire crew kind of, like, jumped in and mm -hmm. they were like, we'll help you. Oh, wow. So. <laughs> Jen just pulled up the picture for those listening. Now, what yeah. are we are we allowed to say? Do we no. want to say what this is from? Oh, well, I mean, it's from Mimesis to the Nosferatu. Is that yep. the Nosferatu? Mm -hmm. um, it's not out yet here, but it's been over mm -hmm. in, like, Europe doing their film festivals and things out cool. there. So they've mm -hmm. been getting a lot of good buzz and awards from it. So I'm super excited to see it when it gets here. But mm -hmm. yeah, so that was a big feature that I think that was, that was the first feature me and Jen worked on together. Yeah, the first together. project we worked together mm -hmm. on. So. so I take it a hundred yard <laughs> line of blood, an arrow pointing into a room. Mm -hmm probably filled with teddy bears. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what, what was in that room? Let me know. Was it? Bunch it of dead bodies. Trick. Spoiler. It was a trick. It was a trick. I'm not telling you anymore. Fair enough. <laughs> I signed an agreement. No, I actually don't think I did sign an agreement. But <laughs> so you're working on film yeah, sets. Yeah, so <laughs> you're working on film sets, and you have these experiences. Mm -hmm. So what happens next? Are you? How long are you working on? just film sets are you doing fashion shows are you doing yeah so that initial one was about a week long that very first one and then i want to say not even a month after that was when i was supposed to graduate so mm -hmm. i graduated and then pretty much just any opportunity that came up i took it so i've done mm -hmm. fashion shows photo shoots just regular client makeups at salons mm -hmm. just you know, I didn't want to turn down any opportunity. Body painting, special effects. Yeah. So, so then, at what point... Because you're now an instructor at the academy that right. you went to school at. Mm -hmm. So, what happened between <laughs> doing freelance work and working at the academy? So, it's actually kind of funny how it happened. Because I graduated, and probably like a week after that, the school was having a event... And of course, now I can't even remember what it was for. I want to say like a kit cleaning or something. And like everybody just came in and it was a social thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I came in and Devon, the owner, had pulled me into her office and asked me if I wanted to teach. A wow. week after I graduated. That's nuts. Yeah. So initially when she asked me, I was like second time shitting my pants, right? <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna get you some depends. Yeah. 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 Was um, any of that shit used to make that happens. huge hundred yard line of? No, <laughs> no, no shit was involved in the making Matt. of this film. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. So she asked me, and I. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's there. Might as well, if you're filling oh your bridges, <laughs> use all your tools and resources about. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm going to bring Matt onto the next film I work on. Please yeah. do. Just I for feel commentary. like we need to document it. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I mean, I, I can be very blunt in saying I never thought about being a teacher, ever. Mm. I'm not a kid person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> not that we're teaching kids here, but... Yeah, you know. I mean, kind of. Yeah. 15-year-olds now. Yeah. I mean, now. Now. The yeah. generation is yeah. very different now. Yeah. 15-year-olds are still children. Yeah. At 31, <laughs> at 31, everybody's a kid now. You guys are all kids. <laughs> um... So, never really had any desire to do that, never thought about it, nothing, but it was one of those things where the opportunity presented itself, and kind of, you know, my my dad in the back of my brain coming into, like, hey, you know, yeah, you want to do freelance, but you should probably have a stable job, too, like, mm-hmm. something to fall back on. And I was like, it's makeup related, so I'm still going to be working in the industry. I'm still going to have time to do my freelance stuff. Um, so I felt like I would have been stupid to say no. So I said, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So I shadowed for about a year and then started teaching on my own. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you never thought about teaching ever in your life? Never. Wow. I didn't even know it was something I'd be, I mean... I guess Kelsey can attest to this if I'm even good at it or not. <laughs> you're, but... a, you're an excellent teacher. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it was kind of... I'm going to edit in silence for 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> edit some crickets. The That's chair. Before. The chair noise. <laughs> yes. For 10 seconds. Oh, my God. Um... Yeah, initially it was kind of nerve-wracking a little bit, just trying to figure out the ropes of that. But I feel like it's something I definitely grew into and grew Mm -hmm. into loving it. And Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm okay at it, so... Yeah, I mean, you got to give yourself more credit than that. You're teaching... I don't even know how many students in each of your classes. (laughs) Like, we we talked about this a little bit in a different podcast um, about how you guys have kind of the careers of a bunch of these young people in your hands. Like you're, mm-hmm. you're really molding these, uh, I'll say kids. Um, <laughs> you're, you're molding inspiring them into, artists. yeah, aspiring yeah. artists into what they can achieve, right. what their potential is. And so I, I would give you more credit than that. I mean, you're more than okay at what you do. You're fantastic at what you do. Thank you. You're welcome. Jen's <laughs> crying if you're not. <laughs> <laughs> not today. <laughs> so, so you've been teaching for how long now? Five years. Okay. And then um, I'm going to be very blunt and say that I know that you're phasing out of teaching now. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that or not. Is it allowed? Well, yeah, worst absolutely. case scenario, we can edit it out, yeah, right? Yeah, worst case scenario, we can edit it out. Well, um, I mean, this is what the whole show is about. Like, yeah, you're, you're, just the students don't do... really know yet, though. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, this isn't coming out. <laughs> okay, great. Well, <laughs> like, I mean, tomorrow. basically yeah. next year. It, yeah, it'll yeah it'll happen, this is so. coming it's out next year. <laughs> this is, it's it's coming out after the new okay. year. Yeah, um, this, yeah. is, this is a very important part of your whole journey. Like, yeah, this is what the whole show is about, like... People getting into makeup and knowing that it's not just one path to, right. to finding success mm-hmm. or finding a career. Because yeah. you, you really are taking it in a very unique direction. Especially yeah. Since there is I'm kind of just business taking like it as it goes, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you would have asked me if I would have ended up here, like, what, 23, so seven years ago? No. I have no idea. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. So, yeah, I am phasing out of teaching, not because I don't love it, but I think this, a lot of my background plays into this, too, with kind of moving every three years and something Mm -hmm. new. It's like, if I stay with one thing for too long, it gets very stagnant to me. Mm -hmm. And, again, not that I don't have the passion for it, but I feel myself getting into that routine, and I don't like that. And I don't want to give off that energy to students who are super excited coming in you know it's it's new to them where to me it's like okay i've been doing this curriculum for five years don't get me wrong i love it Mm -hmm. but it's it's time for something new so what is that new thing for you sanitation sanitation conversation that will be my full-time focus starting 2020 okay so are you excited about it yeah i'm very excited because Again, it's still makeup related, but it allows me to learn different skills and incorporate different skills that I have. So, 
you know, this year specifically, we went on the road with it. We went to a couple trade shows. Um, again, if you would have asked me years ago, networking and talking <laughs> to people, the worst thing ever, mm-hmm. right? Uh, now it's just second <laughs> nature. I mean, do I still, do I love it? No, but I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's necessary. The first couple times me and Jen did trade shows together, she was like, okay, so you're going to talk, right? And if you need a backup, <laughs> I'm here for you. So it was like, so I'm just going to sit here and do makeup. You can talk to him. Yeah. So it was me <laughs> talking to everyone and work in the room. And Jen was like, if you need me, let me know. I'll be here doing a demo. So. <laughs> but I'm glad you put your big girl pants on and you could, uh, yeah, you know, I work can talk to by people yourself. now. <laughs> are you, are you networking? working more now that you're working with yeah, sanitation definitely definitely because mm-hmm. it's all about getting our message out there mm-hmm. so you know obviously we we started off as a movement for social media and gain traction that way mm-hmm. um but we don't want that to just stop at social media mm-hmm. so i've been reaching out to ceos of businesses media mm-hmm. publications like mm-hmm just kind of really stepping out of my comfort zone. Fortunately, yeah. it's through email right now. So yeah. that's not too bad. You can edit your words that way. Right, but, right. Um, Stare at an email for a few yeah. days before you hit send. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make everyone Does in the building read it. Right? <laughs> yeah, really. Have everybody proofread it. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So do you find that, I mean, you said that you're using different skills mm-hmm. now that you're more on the business aspect of it right now. right so and what skills are you really i don't using? i don't really have that much experience in like running a business per se yeah um i mean you know i've i've run myself as a freelancer so mm-hmm. i get that part of it but like the where we want to take sanitation too it's still a learning process for me mm-hmm. too which is why it's exciting because it's new it's something yeah. i've never done yeah so i'm just learning as i go yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Do you do you find that you want to keep learning as you're Definitely. progressing in your career yeah. too? I want to learn everything, even if it's not makeup related. Yeah. Like if I was my age now and went back to school, I would love it because really? I actually care now. Yeah. Back then, I just yeah. just, just wanted to get through it and be done. Right. Now it's just like. <laughs> yeah, these other girls in school talking about going to college, you going to class yeah. for something about Michigan history. I'm just like, that sounds cool. I yeah. want to do that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I mean, I, if I'm honest, I don't want to go sit in a room full of people. I'll do it online, but right. I do want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, you can get in like that realm where you get like addicted yeah. to like getting. Yeah. We were just talking about it in the last mm-hmm. conversation mm-hmm. where you have to like sometimes even stop yourself because you're like all right i gotta pull back and maybe just absorb the last class i took before i start jumping into the next one but it's like you know now there's like those master classes that i get targeted for on on facebook Mm -hmm. all the time um man i'm seeing one right now that's just about leadership that's run by uh bob Iger from from disney and it's mm-hmm. like, how the heck am I going to pass that up? That's perfect. It's right <laughs> on the button. Leadership. And it's so convenient yeah. now, too. There's yeah. that um, that Linda website, L-Y-N-D-A, where you take classes. And once you're done, you get a certificate that automatically links to your LinkedIn account. Really? Yeah. Oh, so, that's cool. And there's, like thousands of classes and super oh. affordable like it's just so yeah. convenient and at your fingertips now it's like i don't want to go to an establishment right. i just right. want to you know learn well, especially it's hard to learn. like it's hard to make the time sometimes yeah. too. like mm-hmm. everyone's busy schedule and it's like oh so i have to drive an hour to this class sit there for an hour and a half and then drive home like i don't yep. have Mm. that extra time in my day to yeah. dedicate to that yeah. but i like, got shit to do i'm always yeah. i'm always on my computer so i can like oh do, yeah you know yeah. chunks always of it on at the a time. computer yeah. <laughs> i think that is actually an interesting conversation because like it, it, you we really are like held back by our own time mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. why in god's name does education have to fit this single path of like Go find a university. Mm-hmm. You have to sit mm-hmm. in class. I mean, for me, when I when I first started college, I was driving to school mm-hmm. for every yep. single yeah. class. And then for some of it, like I didn't have like a dorm. I was you know me living at home, so it was drive a half hour to school, mm-hmm. go to class, drive home, maybe have lunch, and then drive back to school. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous, and that's yeah. all time. 
that we could be using for like yeah. studying right. or maybe even filling out our, mm -hmm. our, our class mm -hmm. load a little bit more. It's just, there's got to be something like, and, and like coming to like the sanitation conversation, like this is, this that's like an education platform that can change everything where it's, yeah. you've got completely 100% online and mm -hmm. do the same certifications. Yep. Um, I just... Yeah, there's got to be a little plug. Yeah. It takes an hour to complete. You get a certificate. Yeah. You're keeping your clients safe and protected. Sanitationconversation.com. Yeah. <laughs> got on, any questions? Let me know. You guys are on Instagram. You guys Instagram, are on Facebook, uh -huh. Twitter, um, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. We're everywhere. You guys are everywhere. And you guys are expanding too. Yep. You guys are growing. It's going to be big. That's the goal. Oh, yeah. That oh, is yeah. a goal. It's difficult because there's a lot of artists, you know, stuck in their ways. Stuck in their ways. Yeah. And we're trying to break that mold. And they yeah. don't want to listen. No. I've definitely talked to some artists in the Michigan area about stuff and they're like, why do I have to do that? And then I'm like, this is why. And they're like, well, I've never done that. Well, that's the problem. So <laughs> is that discouraging to you? As no, not at all. No. No, because I feel like, especially for me, um, and Jen too, but like, I'm very vocal about stuff that I believe in. Mm -hmm. And with me being in the industry, and I have a lot of connections in the industry, and I work with a ton of people. Um, if I'm the one, if I'm talking about it, and I'm like, always talking about that, the actors that I'm working on have heard about it. The directors mm -hmm. I've worked with have heard about it. Producers I've worked with have heard about it. So mm -hmm. now they're starting to like, oh, okay. So now I have producers that are like, hey, I need somebody who is certified sanitary mm -hmm. so I can get an artist like that. Like that's something that they look for now. Yeah. And I feel like just, you know, actors now for sure, like that I've worked mm -hmm. with are like, yeah, I was on this like set or this, you know, shoot mm -hmm. and the makeup artist didn't clean their brushes. And I'm like, you have every right to tell them not to touch your face. Like, this yeah. is your face. Like, that's your money maker. Mm -hmm. And if yeah. they screw it up, guess what? You don't get a job. Yeah. So I have uh, now have like um, artists that are um, not artists, but like models that are like comfortable now mm -hmm. that are like, yeah, no, I'm going to bring my own stuff and mm -hmm. I will use my own products because you never know. And like, mm -hmm. I've been in like situations in every aspect of the industry and have seen that kind of thing horrible. everywhere and horrible. it's disgusting like and mm -hmm. for people twice our age yeah and then it's like when you say <laughs> yeah. something and they're like what and i'm like okay but like when other people start to notice and then they want to sit in your chair versus the other person's yeah. which i've heard from students as well mm -hmm. like it's you know we are changing the industry slowly but surely we're like making it happen so yeah, mm -hmm. and that that takes a lot of networking skills, mm -hmm. just to even just to be vocal about it. Period. Yeah. You know, yeah. To say no, this is what I believe in, mm -hmm. and not taking shit from anybody for it. You right. know, right? That that takes courage, in my opinion. Yeah, which definitely. I think is awesome. And I definitely think it's also part of like the growth. Like just like Jen said, like when you first are in school, and then they're like oh, we have this gig for you. And you're like, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready. Like, I can't do this. And yeah. they're like, just go and do it. You'll be fine. Yeah. And then you get there and you're like, oh, it's not that bad. I got this. Like, what, yeah. what was I freaking out about? Well, especially so, film sets. I mean, I have the, yeah. the personality matches film sets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that I can confirm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just, you know, it's all part of growing like as you grow as an artist and as you realize like what you're wanting from your career and what you like what your expectations are mm. like you should be able to speak that and mm. i like my expectations is like you know i like you have a sanitary artist like yeah. that is my expectation like and i have friends that hire and i'm like i see photos later and i'm like what are they doing like why is this okay and they're like Oh, I didn't even realize that. I'm like, this is why you need to like talk to me. And we'll figure it out. Like, yeah. you know, I'll get you a student that can do that job and you're not going to have to worry about if your actors are going to call you in a week saying, so I got this thing on my eyeball because of the makeup artist. Like, right. yeah, <laughs> it's keeping you safe as an artist also. Yeah. Um, and that's essentially what we're trying to do with it because there is no standard for it right mm -hmm. now. There's right. nobody 
holding these artists accountable. Mm -hmm. And the reality is even just trying to get statistics is hard because we're not going to find a veteran artist who's going to say, yeah, I cross contaminate and infect all of my clients. Right. (laughs) Right. We're not going to find somebody that's going to openly admit Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So, (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it's Sorry. true. It's, it's true. It's so true. Yeah. So, I, I mean, like, they're not going to be like, I gave my client herpes, you know? Yeah. Nobody it wants to. It was me. <laughs> Uh, so really the only instances you even hear about it now is in the the media when major companies like Sephora, Ulta have these lawsuits because of people using testers or mm-hmm. you know things not being done properly and clients or customers getting infected. Well, I also yeah. feel like you hear like the other side of the stories are artists that are like either like self-taught like they didn't yeah, go to yeah. an actual like school for it and it's not even necessarily that they're just not like they're ignoring it it's just they don't know and that's yeah, something that like educated. when yeah. you're in school here like we drill that into you so that you know like this is the first correct. thing you learn right and yeah. like you have you like, can't come to class yeah. until you learn yeah. it for sure <laughs> and then it's like yeah you do like the online stuff like the yeah. sandy combo and then we have the makeup essentials online as well and then you come in and see me and then mm-hmm. i can also help reinforce what those videos said yeah and like if like thinking back like before i went to school like thinking back before i came to school here like i wouldn't have known any of those things and yeah. i do feel like you know even though we do have some artists that are like what i'm not doing that or that's just taking too much time but there are other artists that are like i had no idea this was mm-hmm. a thing i didn't even think of it but now you say you're saying it now I understand why I need to do these things. So, Mm -hmm. you know, we have it on both sides of, like, people who are, you know, kind of pushing back a little bit, but then also, like, others that are like, this is great. Like, thank you for doing this. So, absolutely. Yeah, and um, that was the most common feedback that we got when we went to the trade shows is multiple people coming up to us and saying thank you. Yeah. Now, the double-ended side of that was, you know, Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this and bringing this to our attention. But I'm not going to buy it. (laughs) I'm not going to buy into it. Right. So it's just kind of finding that that gap and getting that person to not only be thankful for it, but actually enforce it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to get And I I hope just one last thing. Mm -hmm. Our hope is that it gets to the point that it is so big and it becomes a standard that if Mm -hmm. you're not in line with it, you're not getting hired anymore. Yeah, for sure. So, um, I definitely want to get back to your career. Sorry. Yeah, Yeah. no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, We talked a little bit, or Nicole, you mentioned expectations. Mm -hmm. Um, A question for you, Jen, is going back to your story, is being a makeup artist uh, just like a fun question? Is it what you expected it to be? Or did you have an expectation? I didn't. No? Mm Mm-mm. Were you just along for the ride? I was just along for the ride. <laughs> okay. Wherever it took me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like I said earlier, I mean, I didn't think I'd be here. Yeah. Right. So. Right. Where do you see yourself in like the next three to I, I hate yeah. that question. Like the first I know, day. but we gotta I ask just, it. We gotta <laughs> ask it. Yeah. I like long walks on the beach. <laughs> um, I honestly, I don't like answering that question. I... I like to be organized, but to an extent. I don't like to plan far in advance. And I, again, I think that just has to do with, I get stagnant. I get into a routine. I don't like planning that far and then feeling like I'm stuck and waiting for the next thing. Yeah. So that's why I kind of just take it as I go. Do you have... Now, ideally, of course, I would love for sanitation to blow up. Yeah. Right? Right. (laughs) You know, that is the goal. Mm -hmm. Um... But I think, especially now, since I'm phasing out of teaching, I want to get back to my freelance stuff. Because, you know, that kind of took the back burner a little bit. I did stuff when I could. Um, again, just kind of making time, but also prioritizing that time. Right. So kind of just getting back to doing makeup for fun and mm-hmm. focusing on pushing the, the company forward. Do you think that's your goal for 2020? Yeah, I if, can if, commit if to could, a year. If, I, I was gonna say let's let's cut this down a little bit. The next year, yeah, you're you're thinking about Talk freelancing, things, more freelancing, and, and sanitation. For okay, sure. yeah, okay. 
That's that's a reasonable amount of you time. You can ask me again in 2021. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll come back to this in I have know, six commitment months. issues. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's just hilarious. Did I just make it we've, weird? No, no. We've, it's, it's interesting because the... The other guests that we've had on here, we've asked them a similar question, mm-hmm. you know, where do you see yourself, that junk? And everybody has given us a... The five-year window. Yeah, like a five-year <laughs> window. You know, like, yeah. oh, in about five years, and I'll do this. And I think I know where you're going with this. Yeah. Probably. Okay. If if I'm not going where you think I'm, I'm going, totally then jump in. jump in. Please do. Um, I may have just lost my train of thought. Cool. Way to go, Jump man. in. But I think, we'll, I think we'll- <laughs> Like you're you're the evidence though that you still have a career that's that's moving forward. Like, that's exactly where I was going. Thank you. <laughs> if you don't have that plan, it's fine. Like right. the one thing we're yeah. trying to highlight in this whole show is that everybody's journey is completely different. Mm-hmm. So to answer that question with "I hate this effing question" is totally fine. Like I that. Didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know you know what I'm, and that's five. Uh, but you know what I'm saying, oh right? Like no. if mm-hmm. if everybody kind of just came about this the same way then there's no point to us doing this show because we want to we want to show everybody that there is like mm-hmm. somebody that you can connect with if right. you are looking to get in this industry if you're worried about like well maybe there's there's too many people in one area um i mean right now mm-hmm. i have three different makeup artists mm-hmm. in, in the same room as me and you're all doing something completely different mm-hmm. with, yeah. with that yeah. education with that passion um, I mean, everybody we've had on the show so far is a completely different story, and I yeah. think we haven't really doubled up on exactly what somebody's career is either, because mm-hmm. even when, Nicole, when you were here with Kathleen, Kathleen's teaching right now, but she's also doing something completely different right. from teaching in regards mm-hmm. to bringing people to the school, so mm-hmm. there's just, there are so many different avenues, mm-hmm. and um, I love that I know some people might have like apologized. I love that you didn't, and you just own the fact that you sorry, hate that no, question. Sorry, no, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, obviously, I have plans, right? I have yeah. goals for myself, but I just think planning out that far in advance. I mean, it, <laughs> this might not be the most positive mind frame, but you know, if you don't achieve that, or if right. it doesn't go exactly the way you planned it, then you yeah. feel like you didn't achieve that. And I don't mm-hmm. like that feeling. Yeah. I just, mm-hmm. you know, I have my things that I know I need to do for myself, but yeah. for the most part, I just take it day to day. Yeah. And, and, and just like the teaching thing that yeah. came out of nowhere mm-hmm. and here I am now, Yeah, you know what I mean? So if something comes up and it's mm-hmm. not solidified in my five year plan, you know, I right. don't want it to be thrown off balance because I didn't plan for this. Right. You know? Yeah. And you being a planner, it's almost like you're putting yourself in a box with saying, mm-hmm. in five years, I'm going to do this. Right. When mm-hmm. in all reality, you could be doing something. Which that's different. something right. that's something that's really fun about this industry is like it's something new every single day. Mm-hmm. And even if you have that five year plan, like you can't even tell yourself like exactly where you're going to be in five years right. no. because things change so much, especially mm-hmm. in this industry. Because, like, you know, tomorrow, like, Jen could get a call from LA and be like, yeah. oh, I'm out! Yeah. <laughs> we, need you like, on we need you on the next Marvel movie. Um, yeah. But, like, in all reality, yeah. you could get you could get that phone call mm-hmm. and say, you know what? Sorry, Devon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I can run sanitation remotely. from Make Up Your Life. I'm here to tell you about Multimedia Makeup Academy, the premier makeup school that prides itself on being number one in makeup practices and standards. If you're interested in starting a career that boasts an average salary of 75,000, has a completely flexible working schedule, and will help you find that connection between doing what you love and making a little bit of money, then text TOUR, T-O-U-R, to 248-595-7967 or head to mma-makeupacademy.com. totally right that you could get that one phone call or you could get that one gig that mm-hmm. could totally flip your career in a way yeah so it, it is interesting being a working artist mm-hmm. that things can change so fast yeah. so i think yeah. it's it's great that 
in my opinion, it's great that you don't necessarily have a five-year plan or a three-year plan or yeah. whatever kind of plan. You're just taking it as it comes and conquering what is ahead of you. Mm-hmm. I think that's awesome. I think it's really awesome. Yeah, and I think that's why like artsy people like this kind of stuff. Like we don't. I, I personally, I had a desk job and I hated sitting behind the desk oh, gosh, every yes. single day doing the same exact mm-hmm. thing over and over and over again. Like that's just not who I am as a person. Yeah. And I've worked on like a ton of like other projects and I'm telling you like not like none of them have ever been the same yeah. like there's something new or a different problem that has to be fixed or yeah. whatever the case may be so it's not like a repetitious kind of thing mm-hmm. so yeah and do you guys find that being a makeup artist you are problem solving all the time too 100% yeah do you, you have you expand on that so you know what my mind goes to right away? I don't want to know the neck, <laughs> the trying to get the the right? blood to project out of the neck on the fly. <laughs> PTSD again, thank you. Um, so, so the last film Nicole and I worked on, there was um, a, a gag that we had to come up with really quick because it it wasn't in the plans which again you know you just kind of have to be on the fly and be ready to do whatever you gotta do and that (laughs) nicole's that one was funny i mean we literally just took a tube and like stabbed it some holes in it and we had a syringe on the other end of it so we filled Mm -hmm. the syringe with blood and just like punched it so it shot right out (laughs) oh my god (laughs) it was the most like redneck way of doing it but it worked <laughs> it worked so dang a lot so, of problems so, yeah, you're, you're yeah. especially proud of this yeah so uh yeah is it that, i mean it the stress is it is it like looking back on it mm-hmm. is it because of like getting this order out of nowhere or do you feel like are, are you looking yeah, back at it so now and thinking you wish you could have done something different a ton of things so this project <laughs> this project was the first project that i was um in charge of right out of school so yeah. it was like the first one that there really wasn't like an instructor there with me which is again a scary situation um thankfully i had like everyone with me like Jen was there so we could run and bounce ideas off of each other Mm -hmm. but it's one of those things that it was definitely like it was stressful in the time that we were doing it and it's um like looking back on it like now I prepare myself for those kind of situations so when I'm working on a set now I'm like, okay, so if this doesn't work or it's not what they want, I have two other ideas that I can do, Mm -hmm. like, right here, ready to go. So I tend to overpack my kit. Um, My mom laughs at me and says it's like when she used to do, like, diaper bags for me when I was little. She's like, you just overplan. Um, So Nicole's entire car is a diaper bag. I have, it literally I have (laughs) the smallest car in every film set. It is filled to the top. It's like a clown car. Open up the yeah. door and things fall out because I have so <laughs> many things. But it's one of those things that if something were to go wrong, I need to have backups for whatever is going to happen. And I never want to be in that situation again to where I don't have something that will work on that. Because when you're looking like bottom line, it's like production is looking at this. If something doesn't go wrong, that's money that was wasted yeah. and time is money. So having to like a quick, like, Oh, I have like a fix that we can do oh. right now. Oh. And yes. <laughs> <Michigan>. so, <laughs> so yeah. So always having like backups. And I feel like that was definitely a huge like learning experience for me because when like, you know, when I was on film sets with um, instructors, like, they had what they were doing down. Like, we were yeah. there to assist and help, but it really was them running the show. Mm-hmm. And then that being, like, the first film that it was kind of, I was the one that they were looking at, and yeah. I was like, uh, okay. And then, I'm like, me, there was one time me and Jen got, like, really mad at each other, and we, like, yelled at each other, and then, like, the oh, next Nicole second... Oh, definitely cried. I cried. Oh, I, like, yeah. cried like a little but, baby. <laughs> but then, <laughs> I... I did. Nicole, it's fine. Nicole, get it together. <laughs> so, 
It wasn't that I was sad. It's just I'm a frustrated crier. So I was yeah. frustrated and I just started crying. And it was like I was still figuring out a solution. But me and Jen yelled at each other. And then two minutes later, we were like, I'm so sorry. But it's just one of those things that just getting used to that stress of, like, being mm-hmm. on a time crunch. Because when mm-hmm. you are, like, in school or if you're doing your own kind of shoot, you're in charge of your timeline. Yeah. And, like, you're the one that's like, okay, I know it's going to take me, like, two hours to do this but on a film set you are probably not guaranteed that time no. like that's what I tell of like my beauty girls that are like oh I want to go into film and I'm like okay well you have an hour to do this in here but I'm going to tell you the reality you have 20 minutes to do this on a film set yeah so you need to get your skills down and your time down mm-hmm. for that so mm-hmm. it's definitely like that learning curve of what you need to be doing and when you need to be doing it yeah. and again like no film set is the same and things happen or you know the shot might not line up and like oh I can see all this tubing or I can see this edge on this prosthetic it's like okay well you know and then you're working with camera saying well how can we fix this so it's not even just about your department it's working with all of the departments problem solving in so many different aspects it's like you know thinking on your feet backup plans for what's planned but then also Mm. taking into account you know you have months of pre-production meetings and then you actually get on set and they want something that was never discussed ever yeah so thinking on the fly and just being prepared for whatever comes your way yeah that's a huge learning curve Mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. having to think on your feet like that um I know, Nicole, you're currently working on film sets. Mm-hmm. You're, that's a part of what you do, mm-hmm. um, along with teaching. Right. Jen, when you phase out of teaching, are you, do you plan on going back to film? Do you plan on... What, what's your plan I really, along with sanitation? In the next 12 months. <laughs> yeah, in the next, in the next year. <laughs> well, I feel like the past about year year and a half I haven't really been doing much other than teaching and kind of just focusing on the company Mm -hmm. so I feel like first and foremost before I get back out into doing gigs I just need to revamp my brand altogether. okay so I really want to crank out some portfolio work some updated website stuff updated branding kind of just get you know my my shit back together yeah yeah. Um, because I, I'm an avid believer in doing it the right way. Like, I don't want to just go out there willy-nilly. I mean, I still have the connections that I've made over the past couple years, but mm-hmm. I think it, it's very important to pre- present yourself in a professional way, and I love doing that. You know, it's very important to me to be presented the right way. Yeah. Does getting your shit together... Does that relate back to what we discussed earlier when you were filling your britches? <laughs> There's a whole lot of shit in this podcast. <laughs> uh, that's what I want to be known for. Um, so that's my first step, kind of just getting my branding back together, yeah. revisiting it because I haven't posted stuff in forever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then probably just reaching back out to the connections I had, see what's going on, what's happening, mm-hmm. and... Go from there. Okay. We definitely. I have no plans. uh, (laughs) My one plan is to just (laughs) rebrand. We definitely have to wrap up. I'm sorry. (laughs) No, it's good. Um, Matt's like, can you shut up already? Let's see. I said it three times. Uh, There was actually, it was about 10 minutes ago. I kind of gave Kelsey the look and then I realized that wasn't a good enough look. Listen, we're women. We're women. We like to talk. We will talk. I understand. Where do you think I work? Matt is like the most talkative person in the building. (laughs) He has to be. He's surrounded by women. (laughs) But also, if we are not aware of the look, we don't know what the look means. No, I just, so, yeah, I figured that yeah, out. Yeah, what's the quick. look? I missed it. I thought, I thought your look was, I have a question. I was going to be like, okay. <laughs> it, that, that was not the look. <laughs> that was I, a, yo, we're running I out of time. the look was, was too basic. It was too, like... <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, okay, he's gonna kill me. Yeah, this, um, this, this part of the I feel like moving forward, for we need listeners. to film this too. Because they need to I, see yeah. that look. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. We've got, uh, we have some things in the works. We've got a camera. Oh, yeah. It's gone. We had a camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, Jen, you know, like wrapping up, I, I did want to, you know, like we always want to kind of tie the, tie the 
A bow. bow right on yeah. top. Yeah, we're wrapping up a present, right? Sure. Um, any hoozles. I'm Merry sorry. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if this is your present. <laughs> uh, what so, were you gonna say, Matt? <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, what we learned is is it's it's okay, like, to have your priority be flexibility. Mm -hmm. I think is is kind of like the moral of this episode, and I. I always want to give everybody like that one last opportunity. If you want to touch on like how you feel, I mean, you've you've already talked about it a ton. But if you wanted to put that cap on like what flexibility has meant to you, maybe not. Like we don't have to say it's just flexibility in the makeup career, but you know, flexibility that Jen afforded herself so that she could get into different a aspects mm -hmm. of of makeup, and then uh, and we'll kind of sign off. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, my story kind of just says it all. I spent a lot of my life not being flexible and conforming to what everyone else wanted me to do that I finally got to a point where I didn't want to do what anybody else wanted me to do anymore. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to just do what I wanted to do. So whatever that means is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Cool. Jen, thank you so much for coming. You're yes. welcome. Thank you, Jen, and thank cool. you, Nicole, for yeah. being our third host yes. Once today. we get uh, an IMDb list up, then you'll be number two on the cast list, because you'll be in two different episodes compared to everybody else's one. We're getting an IMDb. No, I'm just kidding. I was like, I always love adding to my IMDb. I know. Don't play with like, my wait, feelings I'm... like that, Matt. So, like, yeah, I do, I listen to a couple of podcasts. One of, them, uh, one of them's about movies, and they, they actually have their podcast listed on IMDb. Like they bring it up all the time. Anyway, well, huh. we need maybe to do one that. day we should do that. We watch should. terrible we horror need to movies. I have, I have <laughs> a <whole> collection. <laughs> I have it all. Oh, we're we were just talking about this before. <laughs> the podcast. We're gonna have five podcasts. They're all gonna be the wrong turn movies. <laughs> I have <laughs> all those. <laughs> I bought them for research for a film, <laughs> and I made Kelsey watch them with me. Yeah, you did. <laughs> You should check them out if you haven't, but, um, <laughs> or, or not. not. <laughs> then watch Star Wars. Watch Star Wars. Wait, that's to you. With you me. Know. I... <laughs> There's only two people in this room that don't need to watch it. Yeah. There's two others. I was talking to the listeners. That's what we started Well, with. we have Disney uh, Plus now. We have now. to end with we what have, we started We have Disney Plus now, Jen. So yes, subscribe to Disney tonight. Plus. <laughs> I got it for free. I'm so the excited. Rising. Yeah. Me too. Woo! <laughs> I'm paying for mine, but yeah, me too. I just it's cheetah fine. girls on repeat. It's fine. <sighs> yeah, the exact opposite. Yes. Can you guys guess what I've been watching? Um, Hannah no. Montana. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Go uh, subscribe, rate, and review. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Uh, and we will uh, catch you guys next week. Bye. Adios. Bye. Bye. This will be edited. <laughs>